Hi guys, my name is Matt Newmark, and today we're going to go ahead and we're going to cover joint locks. Now, a lot of times when I go ahead and I talk about joint locks, I get one or two kind of reactions, more or less. You know, people either think joint locks or thinking MMA, different kinds of locks they could do, submissions and things like that. And yes, that is joint locks. Other times I'll get people kind of look at me a little bit weird. Some, sometimes they'll even roll their eyes. They're like, ah, joint locks, or whatever, that's old, that's old school, that's traditional martial arts. It doesn't necessarily work. And that's not true either. Okay, you always want to have joint locks in your arsenal because we have to be able to do two things. We have to be able to injure to a degree, and the second thing we have to do is we have to learn how to control somebody without going ahead and going right to strikes or something even more brutal. Why is that so important? Well, a little story that I have is, is that I was working some more or less kind of security positions for a party that I was uh, working back in college. And unfortunately, you had one of our friends go ahead and act out a little bit. They're a little bit, well, let's just say they had a little bit too much. Time. But they're getting a little rowdy, and they were getting violent themselves. But it was one of my friends, it was my buddies. So I had to deal with the situation. I couldn't go ahead and start taking this person out with eye rakes and elbows and knee strikes and things like that. So I had to go ahead and I had to use some joint locks in order to escort this person out of the premises. So once again, my point is, is that joint locks are not the end all be all. You know, when you have somebody, let's say, violently break into their house and, you know, break into your house and you have a, they have 150 pounds on you and you have family to protect, I'm not just like looking for that joint lock. That's a kind of situation where I'm going to use much more violent ballistic tools. But if you get into a situation where we have to go ahead and we have to deal with somebody in a more non-violent way, these joint locks are a great tool to have in our arsenal so we can go ahead and we can deal with that situation without getting too violent when not going ahead and st stepping over, let's say, our legal or even ethical lines. The one caveat that I want to talk about when we talk about joint locks is, is how we get to that situation. You know, someone's just not going to go ahead and just kind of give us an arm more or less. I want to go ahead and want to bring Mark over here real quick. Just understand that anytime anybody gets close to you or puts an arm on you, they go ahead and put an arm on us right here, I can go ahead and I can get to the situation right here. If they're pointing at us, maybe this is a great time to put in that wrist lock. If he goes ahead and bum rushes me right here, this is a good time for the chokes or maybe the arm control situation right here. My point is, is that they're all little reference points that we work on in, but I want to go ahead and underline this point. Person is not just going to give you their limb. We got to go ahead and we need to make use of whatever they give us. And from here, we can go ahead and then flow whatever move that may be. So as you guys go ahead and practice this, have your training partner go ahead and grab you in certain points, certain positions, and then from there, go ahead and flow to whatever lock you guys want to go ahead and practice. We're going to start with some very, very basic wrist locks, and we're going to take it all the way through some arm locks and then end up even with some choke holds. So if we go ahead and we start in this situation, I want to go ahead and I want to grab the wrist right here. This we call just a basic wrist lock. I want both thumbs on the back of the palm, and as I go ahead and I force down, I'm just not turning my fingers right here, I'm using my whole body to force the person down. So this is what I'm looking for right here. After I go ahead and I do that, I have an upward lock right here. And this is the situation, this is the move I actually used up against my friend with that party right here. The door was about, well, let's say about 15 feet away. This person was going ahead, they were just acting all riled on up. So I took them and all I did was, was put some pressure right here and then escort them right outside to the door right here. But when we do this, we want our wrist going down right here, or pushing the person's wrist down and our arm going up just like this. From this situation, I want to go ahead and I want to do a downward lock. So I'm going to rotate the whole arm and I'm going to drop just like this. Now, once again, if I don't put any pressure right here, the person is just going to pull their arm out. So what I need to do is, is put pressure on the elbow, put pressure up on the wrist and lock on down, but also drop my body. Let's start from the top real quick. We have a wrist lock right here. Up with the arm lock, we call it upwards arm lock. Downward arm lock, which is right here, just like this. Next situation we're gonna go ahead and do is, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap this arm all the way right here. Now, I love this one because if I need to take somebody down to the ground, I'm just going full throttle right here and Mark's gonna end up with his butt on the ground. So, how do we get there? Well, if we start with the upward one, the downward one, I take this arm, I intertwine it right here like this, I lock around, grab my own arm just like this, and then I just put pressure down. Notice how much I'm also locking on the wrist as well. So I'm locking these joints in a pretty precarious situation right now, <laughs> okay? Just like this. Let's go through that one more time and we'll do it from the upwards once again. Upwards, pressure, downwards, up and around for this lock right here, okay? What I love about this is I can also hand off. If I need a strike, I can do that as another option. But the option that I like to throw into this lock in right here, come right back over, 
right to this situation where now I can have this arm free if I need to do something. I can also go to this clinch position, throw in my knees, throw in my elbows, okay? But we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move to the final two chokes right here. This hand's gonna come right through here and I want this part of my hand and my wrist coming right around the Adam's apple right here, all right? Grabbing my hand under just like this and I'm gonna go ahead and lift up and squeeze my elbows in. If I have a lot of space right here, it's not what I'm looking for. Elbows are gonna be clinched in just like this. And then as I do this, I'm looking straight up, there's my choke. Last one that I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this arm, I'm pulling out. We're gonna do what's called a darse choke, which is right around here. This hand coming right around here, just like this. And here's a choke, but how I really, really cinch it in, I go ahead and I take my hips and I walk on in, and I go to that kind of choke right there. It's a lot of moves. Let's go ahead and go from the top right here. We have our wrist, okay? We have our upwards arm lock, downwards arm lock, coming right around here, okay? Right from this situation, I can release, come right through over the top. Once again, my hand's free if I need it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a guillotine choke, coming right under here just like this. Elbows are pinched in, looking up, okay? Arm releases, face the neck down a little bit more, Grab my arm. I'd like this to follow the spine right here. Hip in. Good. I'm gonna do it one more time. A little bit of a faster kind of a speed. So once again, let me go ahead and reiterate this again. Joint locks are not the end all be all. It's something that we can actually make very, very realistic, but we have to practice them in a realistic way. What I mean by that is, is that we're not practicing this in a static position. I love these flows because just because one lock doesn't work doesn't mean we can flow to another position and go ahead and force them down in another kind of direction. The one good example of that is that if this one didn't work, guess what? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna roll. If that doesn't work, then we're gonna go ahead and roll this one. My point is, if we go ahead and we practice that through the flow, it gives us a little bit better, let's say, versatility, but it makes it more realistic. So go ahead, have fun practicing these, and other than that, we'll see you guys soon.